Okay, hello, this is LaQueen Battle of Battle for Safe Dishonor Services. Come in here, it is from downtown Boston, Massachusetts at the Copy Library. It is 6.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in Boston, Massachusetts on the Eastern Standard Coast uh, in the United States of America. Very happy to be here. My name is LaQueen Battle. I am a certified medical assistant, adult and pediatric first aid responder for the city of Boston, as well as I am a community health advocate for COVID-19. So what I want to talk about right now is I am pursuing um, publishing academic research in um, academic journals as well as trying to um, discern what is going on um, overseas right now in the country of Afghanistan with our United States government and how do we as young people, I'm in my mid-30s, early 40s, how do we as young people continue to pursue our lives, pursue what we're doing, have a social life, take care of our children, maintain our jobs as well in our home, home living lifestyle? How do we pursue all of that at the same time while, okay, while looking on the TV every day? having the fear that there might be another attack on the United States as well as discerning what is fear versus what is actual fact. And as you know, the United States has been in conflict, okay, has been in conflict with the country of Afghanistan for over 20 years, over 20, 30 years, since not only the 9-11 attacks and the war of terror under the President George W. Bush and Barack Obama, but also since the 1980s and the 19. 90s between the Cold War and President H.W. Bush, okay? So what does what do we as young people in this new millennial generation do, and how do we balance it between the two? We're scared, we're afraid, we're afraid of terrorism, we're afraid of uh, people who don't look like us. At the same time, is we have to be a little bit, um, um, have a little bit of spirit of love and a spirit of kindness when refugees come upon, upon us, as well as immigrants and refugees come to America and say, we want you back in America, we want you back in our country, we want you back here for safety and protection against um, any kind of abuse or any kind of government that has come to uh, put its uh, rules of infraction as well as war, war, rules of terror against you and your family. We as a government, we as young people, want to support uh, communities, we want to support um, societies and, that are coming to here for protection. So what do we do as young people? How do we balance it? So as you know, um, I am a first aid responder, so I'm very kind. I try to be very, you know, sweet. At the same time, though, you have to figure out how do you be sweet versus how do you start paying attention to what is real? How do you discern what is an emotion versus what is actual facts and how do we address the issue? So over this past week here in the city of Boston, I have had issues with getting quality access to health care. I have been in two different hospitals over the last 48 hours, and I have had issues getting quality care and equal treatment in these two hospitals here in the city of Austin. It was nothing emotional. I didn't say anything out of character when I came into the hospital for treatment, but according to the doctors and staff, uh, my per persona being in, a co in the hospital was a little bit of conflict against them and their instructions, okay? so. For me, I'm an advocate for uh, quality access to hair, hair, as well as I'm an advocate to make sure that there is equal treatment among patients, okay? I did um, have a little bit of a conflict with my hospital in the way when I came in um, to this hospital about um, 15 to 20 other staff left the hospital when I came to this one hospital here in Boston. A little bit that kind of concerned me a little bit, so I should have left at that time. But I really needed care and treatment. I was really feeling that I was a bit under the weather. At the same time, though, I still went in and I left in anger and frustration over the treatment that I received at this hospital. Now, what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? Sometimes, you are dealing with a situation that you, is out of your control. 
or you are trying to be patient and trying to get help, get access to what you need, what you need in your life, okay? For me, I needed access to my health care. I needed treatment. I wasn't getting the same treatment as somebody else beside, as another patient beside me in the same room. Okay? I wasn't getting equal, equal treatment, okay? Even though I'm in the medical field, they were working in the emergency room. I worked in the community health advocate, uh, community health line, okay? How do you address the issue? So it's very, very hard, okay? Quality access to health care, okay? It's a human right for everybody, especially dealing with the issues of COVID-19. A lot of hospital staff, especially emergency rooms, emergency physicians, allied healthcare professionals, registered nurses, registered social workers, all of these health healthcare professionals, workers, they have to figure out how do I discern whether treating a COVID patient first, a psychiatric patient first, versus a regular, regular, normal, everyday patient that comes into my care, okay? Right now, a lot of hospitals are getting funding from COVID treatment, okay? As well as, so COVID-19 is a primary concern of a lot of U U.S. hospitals right now. At the same time, though, the United States government is deciding who do we focus on, okay? You guys kind of get what I'm saying? Do we focus on COVID-19 treatment? Or do we focus on uh, a soon-to-be war upon us? Where do we focus on? Where do we put our focus on? So for me, it's really hard to figure out, do I still continue to deal with this negative situation of not getting quality access to health care? Or do I put my more concern and my more needs on addressing the issues how do I be involved in my community? How do I help out people? How do I help out uh, provide assistance for even the American Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders? Where do I go to volunteer in my community? And where do I go to make a difference, okay? So, it's like, should I take care of myself first? Should I take care of my own needs and well-being? Is it more important to take care of me personally? Or should I focus on helping out the needs and be more of a resource to other people in the community. Where should my focus be? And that's really what a lot of people are dealing with, addressing the COVID-19 crisis, okay? I'm just heading to other cities, more further down south, Louisiana and Georgia and Florida. Or should we focus on TV, on the daily press briefings from Press Secretary Chief Musaki, as well as dealing with the emotional turn of the Taliban, as well as people from Afghanistan coming to the borders of the United States of America. As Muslim communities grow bigger and bigger and bigger, how do we as Americans deal with what is soon to be upon us? It's very hard to balance the two, COVID versus a war upon us. It's very, very hard to figure out where does my focus need to be. Okay. And I was watching a video today as a response to uh, Pastor Sarah J. Roberts' message about how should children communicate because it's usually we learn from the mouths of children and that usually leads us on into how our lives should be because we learn from the mouths of children. And it was talking, it's usually given in the ministry of Jesus Christ and the Holy Word and the Holy Bible. Okay? It says you learn from the mouths, you learn from the mouths of babes. It's said in the Word of God. Okay? Instead of the word of God. So, right now, a lot of people are trying to figure out, like, how do you balance the two, okay? War or COVID-19. Homelessness, housing issues, joblessness, um, health problems, um, other issues that the economy as well as America is dealing with. How do we balance the two? What do we do? How do we discern, okay? Um, I'm a little scared. May, is my son coming back home from Afghanistan? Are we soon to have another draft? How do we discern the two? And so as a community health advocate, I am pursuing written, published, academic research to get the review, to get the response, 
and to get the approval from academic institutions and academic agencies to make sure that they discern as well as agree with what I am doing. At the same time, though, they can support the initiatives behind my work. So as a community health advocate, I work in the community, I do speeches in communities and schools and colleges, as well as I have my online media presence, which most of the time through my Facebook groups, through my YouTube messages, through my online speeches, through my webinars, I make more of an impact online social media presence than I make in the community. But for me, the Queen Battle, I have made my it's balance between the two. I have a better impact in the community, community events, as well as at schools and colleges. And I also have a great, great online media presence. Okay? But a lot of people, especially dealing with the, with the issues on television right now, they're dealing with, oh my God, I don't know who to turn to. I don't know where to go for help. Do I go to my community service agency or do I look onto TV and look up to what the government is trying to tell me? What do I do? How do I balance between the two? Okay, so that is the issue. As a person, and I'm still in the medical field, I'm not employed currently, but I am certified in the medical field, I still have to fulfill the requirements under my certification, as well as requirements given to me by government agencies and by government authorities. I have to fulfill the role of a community health worker. I have to fulfill the work, the, I have to fulfill the duties of a medical assistant. I have to fulfill the duties of, of first aid. I can still, still be involved in my community. So I'm a mother, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter, I'm a community advocate, I'm everything I want to be, as well as other people too as well. But sometimes my hands are tied because right now I'm in a personal crisis. At the same time though, as a first aid responder, it's hard for me to be lead in charge of my own agency as well as a voice to other people who are voiceless. And so right now, especially with somebody like Press Secretary Jim Pasaki, she has stated just yesterday on Tuesday, the 24th, in her White House press briefing about maybe 5 o'clock p.m. yesterday, she was saying if there are any other Americans still in the country of Afghanistan who are crying out to us for help, personally give me their names and their phone numbers, and I will make sure they get out of the country, personally. That is what Jim Pisaki said. But Jim Pisaki can't do everything by herself, and neither can I, the Queen Battle, and neither can somebody like Sarah Dick Swap, Roberts, Steve Furtick, um, all these people that are leaders, even Monica Calhoun, even Mayor Lori Life of Chicago, even Mayor Kim Janey of Boston, even Mayor Bill Blasio. They can't do it all by themselves. They need help and they need support. But as leaders over the communities, as leaders over their cities and government, they have a responsibility to fulfill those duties and make sure that people's voices are heard. And make sure if there's an issue that needs to be addressed, that they respond to that issue and that issue is taken care of. or that issue is passed on to somebody who can address it and, and make sure that it's notified and handled in the proper manner. So if there are still Americans overseas in Afghanistan or any other terroristic countries that are under the rule of a, of a terroristic agency, okay, maybe Jim Pasaki doesn't have it in, under her order or under her authority, but she can pass the measures on to an international agency or, an, or another government who can also get the word out to reach that person, their families, and their communities just at that right moment, at that right time to make the decision to get them out for their own safety and for their own security of that community. And sometimes, especially in times of war, 
you are not just dealing with one person, you are dealing with entire communities and entire networks of people. So you see the pictures on Facebook, you see the pictures on YouTube of people clinging onto huge Boeing military graded planes. They are clinging onto these Boeing planes for their lives. The plane is taken off from the airport and you see people clinging onto these planes as they are flying off of the ramps and it is completely dangerous and completely out of order. It is completely out of order for the country of Taliban to have its, even have its own citizens clinging on to American planes for their lives. That is completely irresponsible and should not be happening. Those are not only American citizens, but they also could be, okay, boats, as well as people in, linking up into, are clinging on to these refugees for their own personal gain. It should not be happening to see people on clinging on planes, okay, as the planes are flying in the air. That should not be happening. That is way out of control. I'm going to make a statement right this on my Facebook as well, as well as on Twitter. That should not be happening. They said, oh, it happened before in another world. Oh, it happened before in Saigon. I don't care if it happened before in Saigon. I don't care if it happened before in Vietnam. It should be not be happening at all. are clinging onto these planes for life. It should not be happening. It should not be happening. You think, oh, we're going to take this person back home. Well, I think you're taking it out of context. You're not just dealing with one person. You're dealing with a whole entire community families of religion that is trying to leave terrorism for their lives. It's not just one person, it's not just one family, it's entire generations that are trying to flee this country. For their lives. I know nothing at all. I know nothing. You know, I probably don't even know nothing about what happened with Andrew Cuomo and the allegations. I probably don't know nothing about what real covert research is about. I probably don't know anything at all. But what I do know is what I see. And what I see is what I discern. And what I know that this should not be happening at all. That is wrong. It is wrong. It is out of character. At the same time, though, I have the opportunity. I have the decision. I have the choice to live my life, to publish my findings. To, to let other people know what I have done as well as to be responsible for my actions. If you don't like it, oh well. But I am not only responsible for me, I am responsible for every single person and every single life that I have touched as well as my nonprofit and its volunteers have made an impact on the community. We are responsible, whether you like it or not. Jim Pisaki is not only responsible for the White House and his press and, and, and the chief of staff and the president. She is responsible for every single outlet of the media that comes into contact with and making sure that they get the message across to other people around the world. She has that responsibility. Making sure that the reports are up to date, making, people, making sure that people are notified of what is going on, and making sure that these pictures are real and true and factual. The videos are up to date, the pictures are current, and making sure that they are real and going on right now as we speak. Is this a real picture? Is this a factual picture? Is this a real pic? Is this a real video? Is this video up to date? Is this really what's going on? It should not be happening. Is this real? Is this up to date? Is this current? What should we do as a government? 
You need to address this issue, issue and move it forward. Should, should we be in defense or should we be in an objective? Okay? What should we be doing? Make it a wet path for refugees at the same time, doing a draft, getting our soldiers out to protect the country against the weapons that the Taliban is stealing from the Afghanistan army. What should we be doing? Okay, what should we be doing? It goes from Al Jazeera, it goes to BBC, it goes to NBC New York, it goes to New York, to LA, to Houston, to London, to Paris, to Germany, it goes all around the world. And you think, we do not want to hear the voice of that person. We do not want to see those pictures. We do not want to see those videos. Well, I'm sorry, wake up, pay attention, because everybody's voice matters. They either need a whole bunch of information and make discernment out of it, make decisions out of this whole bunch of information, or they're gonna take a little bit, a little bit of information and then not know the real truth, the real facts about what is really going on. So you either get a little, a little bit of the picture or you get the whole picture, but one way or another, they still need to make a decision. Okay? So as a community health advocate, it's a yes, yes, I'm a, I'm a teacher. That's great, that's great. But there are other issues that still need to be addressed. I still have to be responsible for every event, every person, every email, every official that I've been in contact with. So it can be communicated upon other people that were also in that event, that were also with that person, that were also with that official that also had communication, that were also a part of the COVID pandemic, to let them know I was also at this event. I, I didn't test positive, I didn't test negative for, I didn't test positive for COVID-19. Or I was at this event, I was involved with it, I had a great time. Let me make a contribution to now the first lady's home services. <laughs> let me buy her book, let me make a donation. So you still have a responsibility, even as a nonprofit or a for-profit business or a community service agency. You still have, have a responsibility not only to yourself, but for every, per, every person that you come into contact with. Make sure that the communication is up to date. <laughs> and like today, there was, there was a fact in the news in, 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 in uh, CBS New York. They said that since uh, since Governor uh, Governor Kathy Hochul has been in office, the state of New York has reported an additional 12,000 deaths since Governor Kathy Kathy Hochul has been in office of New York. That's great, but you know what? New York has way more COVID deaths than that because of nursing homes as well as because of anything else. Still, though, it was reported an additional 12,000, and I sent it off to a couple of officials. Great. <laughs> Great. Okay. Still at the same time though, okay? At the same time though, what you do in your own city and your own community has an impact on your mayor, on your governor, on your on your church, and your family as well as everybody around you. As a refugee, you're not only responsible for yourself getting out of, that, out of that country, you're responsible for your whole family leaving that country. For their own, for your whole family's safety and protection. For your whole family's well-being. Okay? <laughs> you're responsible for yourself. So it is scary, it is very, very, very scary to see the pictures in the news. The pictures, okay, the pictures. People cleaning on planes. It's scary, it is very, very, very scary. It's very scary.
very spirit. It's very, very, very scary, very scary, very scary, but you still have to continue to go on and continue to make the needs as necessary. Here's the news. The Pentagon says U.S. military planes airlifted more than 10,000 people out of Afghanistan in less than 24 hours, the highest one-day figure so far. President Joe Biden on Facebook. Update. Between 3 a.m. Eastern Time on, on August 23rd and 3 a.m. Eastern Time on August 24th, a total of approximately 21,600 people were evacuated from the war. 37 U.S. military flights carried approximately 12,700 evacuees, and 57 coalition flights carried 8,900 people. Since August 14th, the United States has evacuated and facilitated the evacuation of approximately 58,700 people. Since the end of July, we have relocated approximately 63,900 people since the end of July. That is, that is a, it's a crazy job, but, you know, that's what our United States is doing. It's, doing, it's a dangerous mission, okay? It's a dangerous mission, but you still have to remain focused on even individual community efforts. You still have to remain focused. As a community hub advocate, I'm here on social media, as well as in my community, making talks when I do get the chance. Okay, making talks and making a difference. In my community, making efforts towards letting people know research is research, whether it's good or bad. Let people know that you have survived the pandemic. Whether it's good or bad, let people know what is going on in your life so they can talk about each other, so they can share it amongst each other. Let people know. Afghanistan is not modern day America. It used to be in the 60s and the 70s, but it's not. Because of war, okay, it's disseminated into a third world country. Even lack of access to health care. Even some women in, in, in Muslim-related countries need permissions from their husbands to go to a hospital, which is what I'm dealing with right now because I'm sitting when I'm married. I'm like, why am I not getting access to health care? That is what a lot of women in the Muslim faith deal with, getting quality access to education as well as getting access to health care. And I'm, I'm wondering why am I dealing, dealing with that issue in America? Okay, so you have a difference, you have a voice, okay? You still have an impact on your community. You can still make the choice, okay? You can choose to have fear or faith, whatever pertains to you. But understand, it's not just one person they need to get out. It's actually families and complete networks of families, networks of generations that need to leave and escape from this country for their own lives. It's networks, it's complete networks, complete community groups, generations that need to leave 
from Afghanistan for the fear of their lives and for the protection of their own families. Not just one person like the Queen Battle, it's entire family networks of families of 10 people, 50 people, small families as well as big families that need to leave this country for their lives. Okay? Alright, so this is the Queen Battle. 30 minutes into my YouTube video on the United States response to the terrorist attack, as well as Press Secretary uh, Jim Taki. She is doing a wonderful job in D.C. right now. Great job. As well as to the United States government in D.C. and to the, uh, the, the Secretary of the Army and Secretary of the Military Armed Forces who are doing a great job for allowing um, Afghani refugees to come into our country and for allowing these refugees to say, we come to our country, we get safety, we can get asylum, and we can get protection. Okay, all right. So, this is the Queen Battle of Battle First Aid Responder Services. Here, as a first aid responder, providing care, providing attention. At the same time, though, being a voice to those who are voiceless. Or just be a voice and let people know what is going on, how it relates to me as well as other people in my community. Okay? I love you guys. Keep continuing to give me thoughts and prayers and donate to the Battle First Aid Responder Services at, uh, at Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal. Okay? I love you guys. Please continue to keep me in your thoughts and your prayers.